Above and Below the Waterline by Jeanne Markham From the green hill of Greenwich Park to the elegant timbers of the Cutty Sark from Deptford Creek to the North Star come Jump aboard the Avatar. Abram Arnold, London, ordinary seaman, signed. August Peters, Norway, carpenter's mate, signed. Charles Alfred, Norfolk, apprentice seaman, signed. Cook George, Bedford, apprentice seaman, signed. Henry William, London, unable to sign. Fisher Robert, able seaman. London signed. Names like unfinished sums. Sepia letters grow faint where the ink has run. Men in powdered wigs and breeches stare out beyond the farthest reaches, dreaming of enchanted lands where strange fruit is grown by strange hands. To go to sea to trade, to explore, to heap up medals and trophies galore, to bring riches to the rich as never before, stuff to make clothes that kings and queens adore. Linen from flax, cherry silks and chintz, embroidered waistcoats make every dull man a prince. But success came at a price for those who clung to wealth like embedded lice were forced to fight off fierce marauders. The Royal Navy was called to give military orders. Ripped sails and gunnels torn asunder. Lives lost in the agony of plunder. Battles at sea came thick and fast. Pirates swarmed the decks and climbed the mast. Nelson in his coat of midnight blue. And the hole where the bullet passed right through. Tea from China. And the undercover opium trade. Grew like a fungus in the spreading shade. Tea chests were packed with every grade. Tea was loved, and the cup of tea was made and made. Hoist the sails, unfurl the flag. Red, blue, and white. Navigation to other worlds by the stars at night. Keep the watch, drop the flag, red, white, and blue. The safety of the ship depends upon the crew. Hold the wheel, wash the deck, white, blue, and red. We'll work and work until we're almost dead. Coil the ropes, lash the hatch, red, blue, and white. Navigation to other worlds by the stars at night. One chest, one blue flannel suit, one pair cloth trousers, one cloth vest, one pair drawers, one singlet, two pairs cotton trousers, two pairs socks, one pair stockings, one pair mitts, one pair sea boots, two caps, one old felt hat, one sou'wester, one pair braces, Three linen collars, one pillowcase, one razor, 
one pocket knife, two books, needles, thread and buttons, one sheath, one small looking glass, one comb. Able seaman Robert Fisher died of dysentery on the Cutty Sark's maiden voyage. I leave a lock of my hair and three small pieces of gold to be sent to my sister should I die at sea. Greenwich, Greenwick, Greenport, a bend in the river for love and sport. Greenwich, a place so full of history, commerce, beauty, and mystery. With its roll call of famous men, from Samuel Pepys to Christopher Wren. Time and the stars are woven together in literature and life, and books bound in leather. From the sundial to the hourglass, time was captured and made fast. From the silver-plated face with its slow tick-tock to the telephone speaking clock. At the third stroke, it will be 8.57 precisely. Greenwich, meantime, is our own red line, tying up the world in circles that entwine. And the lines stretch backwards into the past and forwards into the future while this world lasts. From high on the hill of Greenwich Park, the glittering Thames curls like a ribbon beyond the Cutty Sark. To the left, the great city of London waves its hand. To the right, the open sea beyond mud banks and sand. Across the river, the monuments of wealth cast shadows from capitalism, grown with speed and stealth. But below the waterline and the neon lights, the old history of trade and industry still delights. ¶¶